Okay, so welcome back. This is part five in our series where we show you how to program your bench test instruments. And we're using a signal generator and oscilloscope, we're showing you how to program it. And up to this point, we have been looking at how to program those devices uh, over your USB to do a frequency response analysis of what you see here. We have a chart. Uh, we, we apply frequencies between 10 hertz and 10 megahertz using our signal generator and measure the resulting voltage um, in our circuit, whatever circuit we choose, whether it's a bandpass filter, a low-pass filter, or a transformer sweep frequency response to see the response of a transformer winding to ultimately determine if it's a good or bad winding. And we're showing you how to write this software in Visual Studio. I encourage you to look at the previous videos, uh, show you how to get where we are here. Uh, this video is going to be a fairly brief video where we talk about how to do a rescan and plot a second scan of our frequency response of our circuit on a single chart. And the reason we might want to do this is, for example, if we are measuring a transformer winding to see if it's good or bad, uh, you can see here in blue we have an initial scan of the winding in good condition with no short circuits. And then in orange we have over plotted a new scan where I have applied a short circuited turn to the winding and that will show us in orange the different frequency response characteristic where we're applying uh, sine waves of varying frequencies from 10 hertz to 10 megahertz and measuring the voltage from our circuit, which shows that the frequency response to that shorted winding is very much different from the blue, which is a good winding. And it's a way to determine if the transformer winding is good or bad. So um, what we're gonna do in this video is talk about how we can do this second scan and plot the values on a chart in our Visual Studio solution and think about what we need to do in order to make this happen. So if we look at this plot, you can see um, before in blue in our initial scan where we applied the frequencies and measured the voltage response. For the initial plot, we have used lists in C sharp where we have one list that has the frequencies, the frequency values that we applied with the signal generator, and the other list is the resulting voltage measured off the scope. So we had two lists representing those two values, and then we took those list values, X and Y, and did a data bind to plot them on this chart. So to do a second one, let's think about what we're going to need in addition in order to overplot this second chart. Well, the first plot, as we said, has two lists with frequency and voltage values. And we can imagine that for the second plot, we're going to need something similar. And we know we're going to need at least a third list that has the voltage values for this orange plot, this second plot. Now, if we think about what we were talking about previously, how we, why we use lists. One of the reasons is because um, if we set the signal generator to say 20 hertz and we get, for some reason, we get a bad reading from the scope, we might just ignore that point and go on to the next one. In this case, we have a list of 308 frequencies that we want to apply from 10 hertz to 10 megahertz. And if we have a bad reading, for example, we, if we ignore a reading, we might only have 307. And as you can see here, down on the bottom left, we have a count of, for each scan, how many actual values were in the list. And the, the blue list, which is VALS1 count, is only 307, which means in this blue scan, there was one bad value that we ignored because we have 308 that we want to um, apply and it only had 307 in the final list. So there was one bad reading. And then in the orange, VALS2 count is 306, which means there were two bad readings. 
for a total with both scans of three bad readings. And you can see here in the middle, number of bad readings were three. The issue is for each scan, we may have a different number of values in the list. So not only do we need a third list to represent these orange voltage values, we probably need a fourth list to represent the frequency values for this orange scan because it may not match up with the blue scan. So now we're talking about two additional lists to represent the frequency and voltage values for each measured point on this orange scan. So we know we need two more lists. What else do we need? Well, we know that when we do this measurement, we are basically setting a frequency, measuring a voltage, and then moving on. And after we set a frequency and measure the voltage, we have to apply those to our lists. And that measuring the frequency and reading the voltage is independent of which scan. We still have to do that no matter what scan, and the software doesn't care what scan it's on. It's still going to go out, apply a frequency in the signal generator, and measure a voltage. But what we do need is some way to indicate, hey, this is the second or the orange scan, and whatever results we get with frequency and voltage, we now have to save them to the list representing this orange scan. So we're going to have to have some integer that for scan number that tells the software, hey, if it's scan number one, save it to these blue lists, and if it's scan number two, save it to these orange lists, all right? So we need two more lists, and we also need some indication of what scan we're on. What else are we going to need? Well, um, over here you can see on our SFRA, the button we used to start, it now says rescan. So we're also going to want to, when it gets done with scan number one, this blue scan, we want to change this button to say, hey, rescan to do my second, my orange scan. So we're going to have some of those things in the time step, the system timer that does the time step. When it's all done with one scan, we want to change the button names and get all that configured. Now also, of course, we're going to have to modify the chart because previously you had one series which represents these blue values, but now we're going to have to add a second series for the orange values so that we can overplot both of them uh, on the chart. So let's take a look, as a result of that um, design process, let's take a look at the actual code and see what we're going to have to do. Okay, so here we are in our solution. I encourage you to look at the previous videos to show you uh, how to get to where we are here. Um, first thing I'm going to do is go into initializing. We added, as we mentioned, we're going to need the two additional lists. So in the initializing, we come down here and we have our frequency values, which is the frequencies that we're reading from a file that tell us what frequency we want to step through. And here's for the, the first scan, which is the blue line we had. And I've added Y voltage values 2 for the orange and then X frequency values 2 for the orange. So now we've got our two additional lists. Now I've also added some code that we'll talk about in future videos where not only will we do a frequency response analysis, but we'll also grab uh, or capture waveforms from the scope and we'll be able to modify those. So I encourage you to hang around and look at those videos. But really, I've just added these two lists in the initializing, and that's about it. And if we go to the main timer that is uh, our like one and a half second timer that steps through each frequency to measure the voltage, here's our timer event handler. This is some code I've added for when we do the um, grabbing the waveform from the scope. But the rest of this, as we've had before, um, we're checking to see if the frequency is within the range of frequencies we're going to measure. We set the frequency of the signal generator, read the scope, and here we determine if it's a good or a bad legitimate voltage coming from the scope. And here I have added some if statements to determine if it's the first scan or the blue scan, and this is if it's the second scan or the orange scan. And as expected, uh, whatever voltage we get, we will add it to X frequency values 1 and X or, and Y voltage values 1 and plot it. But if it's scan 2, we will add the values to X frequency values 2 and Y voltage values 2. 
and then we will do a data bind XY for both of those. So each time step, we are going to replot both of those sets of, of uh, lists. And um, as we add to it, we'll keep uh, replotting those. So that's basically the additional code we're going to need to do that. Now, of course, when we get to the, um, in this time step, we had a um, logic where if we get to the end of the frequency range, then we have to disable the timer. And here we also are going to, if it's scan number two, um, we are going to give some feedback like we saw before, how many values are in each set of lists that we showed before, just so we get that feedback. And that's about it for the um, timer. So really that's about it for the code needed to, to overscan your plot so you can adjust your circuit uh, between the two scans and see how it changes. Really very uh, useful information if you want to learn, for example, how a bandpass filter works. You can change the values and see what the difference is. Um, so really great way to learn about stuff. Now in, the, in future videos, we're going to be looking at not only doing a frequency response analysis, but also capturing waveforms from the scope that we can display on our chart. And we can also analyze it and do all kinds of stuff. So I encourage you to, to watch the rest of the series. Uh, if you like any of these videos, please hit the like button, subscribe, hit the bell notifications, and most of all, please let others know that we're here so we get some views. Really appreciate it. Otherwise, take care. Have a really good day. Thanks.